Number 10, Jim Carrey. Jim is considered to be one of the funniest men in human history. In 1995 alone, he had three blockbuster comedies make it big at the box office, with Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Dumb and Dumber, and The Mask. Now, as the years have gone by, his films were a roller coaster of genres. He slowly started moving into the realm of real with films like Yes Man and the number 23, but that movie was really when people started to wonder if things were okay with Jim. And according to Jim himself, he was more than fine, he was learning. Jim has become a very introspective person as time has gone on, becoming more and more spiritual and sure of himself. He slowed down in the acting world and started painting, creating beautiful and disturbing pieces in his studio in New York, but the world of Hollywood was not letting him go so easy. Jim starred as Dr. Robotnik, aka Eggman, in the live action Sonic movie that gave Jim the modern day boost he needed to pop back into the mainstream. However, while being interviewed on the red carpet for Sonic, Two, Jim explained that there were so many things over the years that he has been forced to ignore because of how busy he's been, joking that there was 25 years of mystery science theater to catch up on. He goes on to say that his paintings will soon be available as non-fungible tokens or NFTs, which is a word I did not think would ever come out of Jim Carrey's mouth. In recent interviews, Jim has been pretty adamant about quitting the acting world very soon, so it's looking more and more like Sonic 2 may be his last film role. Number 9, Billie Eilish. Billie is one of the best musicians around right now. You show anyone a picture of her or play even one second of Bad Guy, instant answer is Billie Eilish. While Billie has been making music for a long time, she hasn't always enjoyed the fame that comes with it. In 2020, she revealed that the pressure started really kicking in around 2016, having to deal with many things that would make most adults crumble. She was still a teen at the time, and having a massive crowd gathering around you every time you step outside is not fun. In an interview with the LA Times, Times, she explained that she hated going outside, being recognized by anyone was panic inducing. She just wanted to do normal teenage things without being spotted by paparazzi. She then explained that being locked in her home in 2020 really helped her reflect on the situation and grow as a person. It's understandable that that pressure that young made her uncomfortable, like look how many child actors quit acting for the exact same reasons. That and a lot of DUIs. Number 8, Brad Pitt. In 2019, Brad sat down with Entertainment Tonight Canada to discuss the things that drew drive him to take the roles that he chooses. Pitt has been around since the mid-90s and has gone nowhere but up, up, and away. While he's not much of a franchise man, Pitt has been a busy bee starring in several blockbuster hits like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, and so many more. Despite being a megastar, Brad has actually struggled with his fame over the years. He actually got very introspective in the interview, explaining that the struggle wasn't exactly with the glitz and glamour, but rather the distance that was growing between himself and everybody else. He says that as he got older, older, the people he surrounded himself with became more and more important to him. He goes on to say that his time working on set meant that he would not be able to enjoy the things that he wished to use his money for, like traveling the world. Even though he has filmed in some pretty luxurious locations, actors rarely get enough time to actually enjoy the scenery. It seems that Brad's been able to get over his gripes, and he now leaves time for himself between shoots to get a little groovy. Number 7, Daniel Radcliffe. Dan the man with the plan can. Play Peter Pan, nailed it. Mr. Radcliffe, of course, rose to flame when he was just 12 years old, portraying the iconic magical misfit Harry Potter in the film series based on the novels by J.K. Rowling. Dan is one of the few child actors who continued to work following the end of their franchise. Being in every genre imaginable, from dramatic art pieces like Swiss Army Man, to the action thriller Guns Akimbo, to the horror flick Woman in Black, Dan proved that he was more than a scar and some glasses. Of course, starting to be such a big name at such a young age, had a massive effect on Dan. Growing up in one of the most profitable franchises of all time, he would make regular appearances at conventions and in studios. Apparently, he faced a lot of hate from some fans who would actually boo him when he would walk on stage, something he claims to have been long-lasting and anxiety fuel. Thankfully, the harsh words never stopped him from doing what he loved, appearing in eight Harry Potter movies before morphing into the Hollywood A-lister that he is today. Number 6, Kylie Jenner. Kylie is one of the younger members of the Kardashian clan. Being rich and famous at such a young age has dramatically impacted her day to day. In an interview from 2015, Jenner said that she woke up every morning with the worst anxiety, claiming to launch out of bed around 7 or 8 because she is nervous that there will be a negative article waiting for her to deal with. The fear is warranted as over the years her name has been on the front page of media outlets a few times for various scandals and rumors. Unfortunately, most of the things that have been revealed have been 
proven to be true, like the mistreatment of employees at her cosmetic factory or the fact that she lied to Forbes magazine about how rich she was, so kinda hard to feel bad for Kylie on this one. Number 5. Megan Fox one of two Transformers alumni that will pop up on this list, Megan Fox is one of the few people that hated acting so much that they did eventually retire. Megan was of course the hottest woman in Hollywood in the mid 2000s, but following her departure from the Transformers franchise, things started to take a turn. She was being casted in less and less, seemingly due to her bashing Hollywood any chance that she had. The reason she was let go from Transformers was because she referred to Michael Bay as a former leader of Germany whose name rhymes with Schmittler. Between 2012 and 2023, Megan only starred in one franchise, and that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the live action series. So bad it was remade into an animated feature this year that made millions. Megan actually called out Hollywood a lot in the past, claiming the process behind developing a film and casting a project was disgusting. She felt like an object many times in her career, and rightfully so. Every shot of Megan during the day in Transformers looks like an Axe body spray commercial. While she is adamant that she absolutely hates being famous, she seems to be appearing in movies again, so I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe Hollywood likes it when their actor teases them. You know, it gives them a little tingle downstairs, a little kinky. Number 4. George Clooney George was a massive star in Hollywood, being deemed a Hollywood heartthrob thanks to his work on the hit TV series ER. Over the years, Clooney's career has been filled with many hits like Ocean's Eleven, as well as a brief stint as Batman in 1997 that I will never let him live down. In recent years, things have slowed down drastically for the heartthrob, being casted in less and less roles the closer we got to 2023. His last two roles were in The Flash and Ticket to Paradise with Julia Roberts, both of which received terrible box office returns. This may have something to do with George believing that Hollywood is an extremely toxic place. In an interview with IndieWire, Clooney said that fame can be very dangerous. While he has maintained a rather humble approach to life, that wasn't always the case. George recounted how early in his career he enjoyed the sneaky nature of the press. He liked the fame being delivered to him on a daily basis, and it eventually messed with his mental health. Over the years, he's tried to separate himself from his projects once they wrapped up. These days, he spends a lot of time away from the spotlight, and instead being a full-time human just trying to exist. Number 3. Shia LaBeouf Shia is an interesting man. For a long time, he was Hollywood's go-to funny guy to throw into movies and TV shows, but since 2015, he's existed in this weird space between superstar and super jerk. Over the years, many situations involving Shia, including everything from shoving a dude to mistreating his ex, have been brought to light. This was part of the reason that he slowly started being casted in less and less projects, with his last big franchise being the third Transformers movie. Since then, he's had a slew of indie and passion projects, but according to Shia himself, the entire idea of Hollywood is, quote, soul crushing. During a Q&A at the Tribeca Film Festival in 2015, he claimed that there was little to no inclusivity in the industry, that he was a product for the studio to sell. He went off into a bit of a tangent that I won't quote fully because it will cause headaches. But to summarize in English that we can understand, Shia hated being famous for being someone's puppet and not for his own creative material. As we know, Shia never actually retired from acting but following this revelation, he has appeared in far more independent projects, which means he's given almost complete creative control as showcased in the 2019 award-winning film Honey Boy, loosely based on his own life. Number 2. Robert Pattinson Robert rose to fame thanks to playing the sparkling man with the plan Edward Cullen in the live-action Twilight series. While many are under the impression that being a part of such an iconic role would be a game-changer for most, for Robert, it was more of a waking nightmare. Sitting down for an interview in 20 2015, Rob gets real about the insanity that followed the release of Twilight. As one would expect, he was bombarded by fans in the streets constantly, and people were literally sitting outside of his house waiting for him to emerge, driving him crazy. He didn't go into supermarkets in person for six years, but these days he can actually exist in public since the Twilight stuff's kind of died down. He was honest in the interview and expressed that he is one of the most uncomfortable people in his normal life, and that it took him a very, very long time to reach the level of comfort that he has now. All that fame of being an actor has little impact on him these days as he's become a much more serious actor with films like The Batman and Tenant under his belt. Thankfully the whole Twilight thing is over and done, but there is a prequel to The Hunger Games on its way in a couple months, so uh, Twilight prequel? Anyone? Huh? You? Yes. 
Number one, Gigi Hadid. The Hadid modeling empire is strong, with Gigi being one of two Hadids roaming the runways of Paris. Despite coming from a wealthy family and living one of the most lavish lifestyles around, Gigi actually hates everything about it. According to herself, being busy for such long periods of times means that she isn't able to make time for the people who care about her in her life. She has lost a lot of friends over the years simply by being unavailable and everyone drifting apart. Now, this is a fair reason to hate your fame, but at the same time, if your friends can't respect that you're across the world modeling Chanel and Louis Vuitton, they don't deserve to be your friends. Besides, I've seen Gigi's Coca-Cola ad and she said she loves doing game night with her friends all the time. You gonna tell me that was a lie? Number 10, Macaulay Culkin. Having been in the acting industry since the age of four, Culkin was only nine when he starred in the first Home Alone movie and became a household name shortly afterwards. He was eventually named by VH1 in, 20, in 2005 as the second greatest child actor of all time. Culkin was also nominated for a Golden Globe for his appearance in the iconic Christmas film. And he also won that year's Young Artist Award for Best Young Actor in a Film Role. Like this dude, it was on an upward spiral. Culkin decided to leave the acting industry at the age of 14 in 19. 1994, shortly after he appeared as the lead in Donald Petrie's comedy film Richie Rich. He took this step essentially because he felt tired of the industry and his parents' control over him. The Culkins do not have a great relationship with their father, Kit, who has eight children, two of whom are no longer with us. Macaulay, for instance, has spoken about how he was very physical towards them growing up. In a 2019 profile with Esquire, Macaulay portrayed his father as a controlling bully who pushed his sons into the acting business because he just couldn't achieve success for himself. He told many people in his life and later in interviews that acting had become a chore instead of something that he enjoyed doing. He wanted a normal childhood so he quit and made it happen. Thankfully he has since returned to the acting world, most notably in season 10 of the FX series American Horror Story and he's married to former Disney star Brenda Sung. So things seem to work out in the end there. Number 9, Amanda Bynes. Amanda got her lucky break on the Nickelodeon sketch series All That. Eventually the producers decided to offer Amanda her own show. Her success only grew from there and the Amanda Bynes show became one of Nickelodeon Nickelodeon's most watched series, and she was picked up by several studios to star in non-Nickelodeon projects like She's the Man and Easy A. But Amanda took a hiatus in 2013 following a very public mental breakdown. According to Amanda, she had become addicted to the devil's lettuce at a young age, and while it wasn't an addiction at first, with more roles came more pressure and a need to find a new way to cope. This eventually led her to more drastic substances. In 2013, Amanda posted a series of bizarre tweets where she seemed to be insulting everybody that she could think of. She even called the former president Barack Obama's wife ugly, clearly referencing a character from The Amanda Show, but it's still pretty harsh. She was arrested and placed under psychiatric hold as she was accused of several hit and run incidents and was officially charged with reckless endangerment and criminal possession of herbs and spices. Her parents then placed her under a conservatorship until 2022 when she stood in front of a judge healthier and better than ever. Number 8, Kei Hoi Kwan. Kei Hoi Kwan is one of two goonies on this list, playing the character Data in the 1985 classic. He was also short round in the Indiana Jones movies, delivering some iconic one-liners and cementing himself as a legend in the world of child acting. Around the end of 1991, he decided to take a break from the acting world as the fame and fortune was slowly becoming too stressful. He took a break from acting for over 20 years before making a triumphant return to the silver screen in 2022's Everything Everywhere All at Once as Waymond, the lovable universe jumping husband. In fact, he was so good in that role, he received the Academy Award Award for Best Supporting Actor, delivering a tearful speech that I really can't talk about because I'm going to try to. Number 7, Lil Tay. Lil Tay is a rapper and according to the photos that pop up when you google her, it looks like she has a phone made from $100 bills. I'm not sure what that's about. Recently she popped up in the news after someone shared the information that herself and her brother had passed away. This took the internet by storm and her fans were devastated. However, it turns out that she is still very much alive and in a statement given to TMZ from Tay's family, she made it perfectly clear that she is safe and still kicking, and she said the last 24 hours had been particularly rough. Apparently her Instagram account was hacked by some third party and they used it to spread misinformation and just straight up rumors. But much like me, these guys didn't know how to spell stuff, so the first clue was that her name was literally misprinted several times. What's still unclear is why it took Tay 24 hours to get word out that she was alive, especially because she says she was aware that her account was hacked and was getting phone calls about her passing. She got famous as being one of the world's youngest 
biggest flexers, literally making money by pretending to have money on the internet. But she stopped doing that in 2018 after receiving so much online hate. And that's why many people were confused why her account had posted this announcement when it had been so inactive for so long. Number 6. Lindsay Lohan Lindsay is a jack of all trades. She acts, she sings, she dances, she writes, and she's even the queen of her own business empire. Now, despite all of this though, this former Disney star and Hollywood bad girl has a net worth of like $500,000. Well, that is apparently because she loves to take nice long vacations, like all of the time. Lohan has been forced to declare bankruptcy a few times, and as we know, she fell out of the mainstream and started a very public battle with substance control, basically quitting the acting world forever because she just got too into the partying lifestyle. This left Lindsay in the 600 figure range, making her poor by Hollywood standards. Eventually, this young child actor entered rehab and kicked their bad habits right into oncoming traffic. It wasn't until she posed for Playboy and opened up about her life on Oprah Winfrey's talk show that her finances began to stabilize, she started getting more roles again, so here's hoping that we get that Freaky Friday sequel we've all been waiting for. Number 5. Jeff Cohen Jeff's name may not be familiar to you, but his most iconic and only acting role certainly is. Jeff played Chunk in the much loved classic adventure flick The Goonies. Chunk was one of the many young actors in search of the treasure of one-eyed Willie, so they could save their small seaside neighborhood from being bulldozed to the ground. And this movie has aged like a fine wine. It just gets better and better the older you get. Jeff stole the show and truly stood out among the ensemble who, like who could forget his notorious interrogation scene? That dude almost got his hand blended. Following the success of the movie, many were under the impression that he was going to have a long successful career. While his co-stars went to star in franchises like Lord of the Rings and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Jeff decided to go the opposite direction and he quit acting entirely. Unfortunately, he was being pegged as a chubby actor, so that's exactly what people were trying to cast him in. And rather than give him room to grow and breathe, studios were just trying to typecast him as this big nerdy dude in every single project. He found it difficult to secure work, and it was unfortunately puberty that secured his fate. He was going from chunk to hunk, according to an interview with the Daily Mail, and eventually he realized that it just made sense to give up for now and try something else. So that is exactly what he did. He went to school, focused on his mental health, and he got a degree in law. And now he works out of a law firm that he co-founded with his business partner, Cohen Gardner. So good for you, Jeff. Number 4. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen Mary Kate and Ashley were once the stars of their own show back in the day, and they made several movies together like Double Double, Toil and Trouble, and New York Minute. Now around 2005, these two suddenly stopped making movies or TV appearances out of the blue. It turns out that they had been fed up with the movie business. Not just that, but the amount of toxic men in the field really came to light. Apparently they were being harassed or mistreated all the time at a very young age. It's no wonder that they hated most of their time on set. Since stepping away from the movie industry, the twins launched a fashion brand called The Row, a company that has won several awards, even taking home the highest honor of the Council of Fashion Designers of America. Dude, that sounds like a fashion Illuminati to me. Probably some pretty comfy robes though. Number 3. Barrett Oliver The never ending story was a staple in many childhoods. Filled with magic and mystery, this film was dropped in our lives in 1984 and featured some of the most beautiful practical effects ever put to screen, and some really weird puppets. The main character of the story is Bastion, a young man who finds a book about the world of Fantasia. Now we only see Barrett as the narrator a few times over the course of the film, but in the final act he is whisked into the world of Fantasia. Barrett starred in a handful of projects in the 1980s, but following 1985's Cocoon, Barrett decided to stop acting. The success of the film Never Ending Story was causing him trouble at school. Kids would be making fun of him and they actually called him Fur Boy. It was not fun. So he decided to quit acting and focused on another career. Oliver now works as a photographer and printer, specifically antique photos. So if you see a man with a long black beard and dreadlocks asking you for a photo on the boardwalk, it might be the kid from the never ending story. Number 2. Peter Ostrom From the moment he walked into the room, talent agents immediately knew that Peter was the perfect pick to play Charlie Buckets after seeing him partake in theater productions in Ohio. The young talent and his co-stars began filming in Munich in the summer of 1970 as he was approaching the 7th grade. The film was released in June 1971 and is still considered to be a classic in the world of cinema. It's personally been giving me joy and scaring the life out of me since I was a young lad. Following the success of the film, you'd think Peter would have continued to act, but instead he decided to step down and focus on his true passion, being a 
veterinarian. That's right, if you live in New York, there is a very good chance that Charlie frickin' Buckets had your cat spayed or neutered. In recent years, he has told interviewers and fans that the movie business just wasn't for him. Number one, Jake Lloyd. Jake was the little boy that became a Sith Lord, playing young Anakin Skywalker in Star Wars Episode One. While his character eventually becomes Darth Vader, Lloyd's personal life would turn out to be mm, just as rough. Following the release of the film, Jake was actually picked on relentlessly by both his peers and Star Wars fans. He grew up with people hating him in public settings and cursing his name whenever Episode One was even mentioned. Seriously, Star Wars fans are just, just plain mean, man. Jake eventually decided to quit acting for good and save himself from any more public backlash. All that hate seemed to stick with Jake over the years though as he had become more and more violent in the public eye and he was becoming well known for being short tempered. In 2015, police chased the 26 year old Lloyd for 25 miles before he crashed off the side of a road on Interstate 95 in South Carolina. He wasn't intoxicated at the time but after being arrested and sent for a psychiatric evaluation, it was concluded that the young actor had just been suffering from schizophrenia and he was held for treatment. Thankfully, currently Jake is in a much better place mentally speaking but his career will unfortunately never recover. Number 10, Jason Earls. Bang, flat it, Jackson! That, that's right, fans of the show surely recognize Mr. Jason Earls as Jackson Rod Stort, aka Miley's big brother. Fun fact, Jason was almost 30 years old when he started playing the character who's in his mid-teens, so hey, good for Jason for nabbing that one. He was a lovable goofball who always had something going on. This man was literally the physical embodiment of ADHD. I love him. Following his time on the show, he nabbed the role of Sensei Rudy Gillespie on the hit Disney XD series, Kicking It, which was genuinely one of my favorite sitcoms as a kid. The show centered around Rudy running the Bobby Wasabi Dojo, which was a failing karate studio in a strip mall. The show ran for four seasons before suddenly being cancelled in 2015. Jason was left wondering where his next check may come from, and what his next job was going to be. Following kicking it, Jason ended up taking an unplanned hiatus from the acting world. A hiatus that finally ended in 2022 when he returned to the acting world in the Disney Plus show High School Musical The Musical The Series. Really Disney? You didn't want to workshop that one a little bit? Apparently though he's been involved with that show behind the scenes since it first aired as a mentor to the young actors. Jason is considered a Disney darling and he currently teaches the next generation how to be just as energetic as he was. Number 9, Shanika Knowles. I know what you're thinking and no, despite sharing the same last name as Beyonce and Solange, Shanika is not related to the Knowles family. She just happens to share the same last name. That would be cool if everyone with the same last name was related though. There'd be so many Smiths. Shanika played Amber Addison, one half of the duo that would make up Miley's tormentors. Amber and Ashley made Miley's life a living hell on the show, with Amber being played as a jealous type. She thinks she's a great singer, she's the editor of the school yearbook, and she was the first in her class to get a driver's license. Oh, isn't that special? After the show was cancelled, it seems that Shanika probably should have told people that she was related to Beyonce. Unfortunately, her acting career never got bigger than her time on the show. During her time on the show, she was in the film Jump In alongside Corbin Blue, but even that was like a much smaller capacity. She was never able to find her place in Hollywood, and she now sits in that pile of actors that never moved on from the House of Mouse. Say hi to Mitchell Musso for us. Number 8. Mitchell Musso. Mitch played Hannah Montana's best friend, Oliver Oaken, on the hit Disney sitcom Hannah Montana. When the show was coming to an end, he began dominating the scene. He was being casted to voice people like Jeremy and Phineas and Ferb, and played one of the titular kings in Pair of Kings. And he was in something called Hatching Pete. I'm pretty sure I saw it, but I'm, I like repressed that memory. It was really weird. He seemed to be following the same track as Demi Lovato, as the next big thing to come from Disney. People think that about Demi Lovato, right? That's, that's something that people agree on? Unfortunately, his career came to a scream reaching halt in 2011 when he was arrested in Burbank, California. He neglected to slow down after being directed by police, and the report said that the moment the window was rolled down, it was like a cloud of no-no juice just drop kicked them in the nostrils. He blew a BLA of 0.8, which for those of you who don't know, means that he was hammied butt. He was arrested, forced to participate in a no-no juice educational program, and charged with driving under the influence. Needless to say, that didn't really go with Disney's vibe, so he was re casted on Pair of Kings, his prank show got cancelled, and he was basically blacklisted from Disney and everywhere else entirely. He had also been attempting to start a music career, but that 
just nosedived into a toilet. So if you'd like to find Mitchell these days, you can download one of his old songs and you'll be the first one to do it in a while, so I'm sure he'll find you. Number 7, Moises Arias. Another former Hannah Montana star, Moises is probably best known as the young entrepreneur and biggest troublemaker on the beach, Rico. His character on the show was always getting sucked into the family's problems and he delivered some iconic moments that are a big part of the reason that this show still holds up. There's a good chance that you've seen him in recent Hollywood flicks, but you might not realize who he was. Since leaving the Disney world behind, Arias has been a part of several indie films that received stellar reviews like the coming of age story Kings of Summer when he played Biagio. But most recently, he starred alongside SNL alumni Davidson in a movie based on the comedian's early life called King of Staten Island, sprouting a goatee and he's got tattoos all over him. He's unrecognizable. It must be in his contract that he exclusively works in films with King in the title though. It's just a little coincidental. Number 6, Sterling Knight. Sterling only made a handful of appearances on the show, but certainly made his mark as one of Hannah Montana's love interests that doesn't exactly work out. Hannah Montana was actually just one of a few shows that Sterling ended up being a part of, being casted in stuff like Sunny with a Chance, So Random, and Starstruck. His most lucrative role though was playing Zac Efron's son in the film Seventeen again. That's right, I bet you forgot about that one. Weird movie, guys. Since his days at Disney, he has unfortunately fallen into the category of brokest cast member. He's made small cameo appearances in films and TV over the years, but he hasn't had a significant acting gig since 2015. Nowadays, he's still trying to work, but when he's not working, he enjoys traveling across the globe. I'm not sure that's a great way to save money, but eh, I'm terrible with my finances, so who am I to judge? Number five, Cody Lindley. Cody was probably the most memorable love interest to ever appear on the sitcom. Sorry, Jesse McCartney. McCartney, not today. Cody played Miley's on and off again love interest Jake Ryan, returning over and over again until the show's final season. If you were a fan of Jake, then I have good news. If you hated Jake, I have bad news. It actually took a few years for him to stop acting following his time on Hannah Montana. He was able to snag a role in the Sharknado franchise, specifically 4 and 5. There are 7 of those movies. Whoever keeps doing that, please stop. Outside of his role on Sharknado, he's unfortunately found it difficult to find work. Apparently being a Disney kid can severely hurt your career, cause during his time on the show, he was in a ton of projects, either produced or developed by Disney, but the moment that the show was over, it was like he got Do Not Hire just stamped on his forehead. Which is a shame, cause I saw some of the clips from Sharknado and it's surprisingly entertaining. Number 4. Emily Osmond. Many fans of the show may believe Emily Osmond got her start on the Disney sitcom, but she was actually a well established actor well before that, starring as Gertie Giggles in the Spy Kids franchise. Remember those movies? I swear the pitch for that was just like, hey kid in Jackpack goes wee! She fell more into the mainstream though, thanks to her role as Hannah Montana's best friend in the world, Lily Truscott. The reason Emily is so far down on this list is because she is one of the few Hannah Montana stars who's still working to this day. That's right. I could not find 10 broke people to use for this list from the show because everyone was just so good at their jobs that they ended up doing stuff afterwards. Emily starred in sitcom after sitcom, even being the lead of her own between 2014 and 2018 called Young and Hungry. Emily currently spends her time, that's right, still on camera, and most recently she played a character named Chelsea on the sitcom Pretty Smart. While she may still only be in the world of TV, she seems to have found a nice home among the lights and cameras. Heck, she probably stays there where she films. I don't Oh, that bed on Young and Hungry did look pretty comfy. Free rent. Number three, Billy Ray Cyrus. Billy Ray Cyrus. What a great name. It's three first names all in one, so you know that this guy is a country singer. Billy Ray is not only the fictional father of Hannah Montana, but he's actually her real life papa too. Billy Ray, and I do have to say that, not Billy. Billy Ray was a welcome addition to the cast of characters that made up Hannah's life. Being a silly but grounded father figure who actually had a lot of wisdom to share with the young fans. Following the show's cancellation, Billy made the decision to focus on his music career instead of acting. Like he appeared in a few movies here and there, but it was really his voice that got him back into the mainstream. Thanks to his vocal track on the song Old Town Road, as well as his appearance in the music video, you can find any and all songs from this man on Spotify, and good lord I recommend you do so and blast it as loud as you can. Good old Billy Ray. Number 2. Dolly Parton. She tumbled out of bed and stumbled in the kitchen when she played the role of Hannah Montana's Aunt Dolly on the sitcom. First of all, this woman is in no way broke. She is a sweetheart with a theme park that is one of my personal favorites. It's jammed against the side of a mountain and it's in Tennessee, so nice. She made this list because she was on the show, she's worth mentioning, and to be honest, I ran out of unsuccessful people from the show to use. Everyone did really well in the world of acting. Now. 
We gotta mention Miss Parton because A, iconic character on the show, and B, cause I wanna! Her role as Miley's aunt on the show was incredibly well done. Despite Dolly basically playing herself, her character was often there to help Miley in times of struggle. And she delivered a lot of words of wisdoms that not only helped her character, but that spread a really positive message to the audience as well. In the past few years, Dolly has been very active in the music world and has even ventured into the world of writing, releasing her first book called Run Rose Run that she co-wrote with James Patterson. She also released an album to go along with that book, just as a little bonus. If you're lucky enough to spot her, she does apparently spend some of her personal time at that theme park, but she's not hidden on a ride like Johnny Depp, who I swear is there all the time. That thing looks way too real. And at number one, Miley Cyrus. Taking the top spot on this list is Miley Cyrus because she is still the most famous cast member to ever come out of this sitcom. Starring, of course, as the titular Hannah Montana, Miley doubled as an actor and a musician. I can still hear the climb ringing in my skull anytime I walk up a hill. Her epic voice and talents as an actor nabbed her a sitcom that lasted over five years. But when the show was done, fans wanted to know where Miley was going next. Well, that question was answered in 2013 when she decided to show the world that she was no longer some goody two-shoes Disney girl, she was now a woman with her own free will, and she used that free will to swing on a wrecking ball in her birthday suit. And she started one of the most popular dance moves of the 21st century. And I, I still can't do it. Like, is it in the hips? What is I. Following the end of the series, she focused on her music career and stuck to it for quite some time. I'm not saying that she doesn't sing anymore, in fact, she pumps out fresh tracks all the time. When it comes to the acting world, she's actually played herself in films and TV more often than anything. Sure, she's had some voiceover roles in movies like Bolt or Guardians of the Galaxy, yeah, that happened, but in films like The Night Before, Pop Star Never Stopping, she's just like a fictionalized, wilder version of herself. Who knows what she may pop in next? Got any theories? Let us know in the comments below. Those are the Hannah Montana stars that lost their fame overnight. If you were upset that most of these people turned out okay, I'm sorry, it's not my fault. I was seven when this thing came out. It's not like I could have influenced the decision process. I'm not the boss, baby. All right, number 10, Drake Bell, uh, Drake and Josh, a sitcom that gifted us with some incredible one-liners and caused anyone named Megan to have their lives changed forever. Drake Bell and Josh Peck starred as the titular Drake and Josh for four seasons before being canceled in 2008. Following the cancellation, the three main cast members, they all went on to have steady work for a short while. Miranda Cosgrove, who played Megan, had some success in voiceover and was given her own series, iCarly, before dropping out of the acting world in 2015. Josh Peck starred in a few movies and TV shows here and there, but has only recently made a return to mainstream, appearing in the new Christopher Nolan film Oppenheimer. Drake has probably had the worst go of the crew when the show was canceled. His roles were limited to straight to video flicks and voiceovers starring as Spider-Man in the animated Ultimate Spider-Man series. The worst performance of all though was when Nickelodeon thought it would be a great idea to make a live action Fairly Odd Parents movie, I actually remember this, starring Drake as Timmy Turner. Needless to say his status as a celebrity was gone at that point, but the nail was driven into the coffin in 2021 when Drake was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after it was revealed he'd been being a young fan for years so if you see him in an orange jumpsuit cleaning graffiti off the wall you'll know why all right jamie lynn spears at her number nine spot jamie starred as the title character zoe in the hit series zoe 101 alongside fellow entry on this list matthew underwood her time on the show was well received and made many fans excited about what she may film next when the show was eventually canceled in 2008 jamie was at the center of a massive media rumor the theory was that zoe 101 was abruptly canceled due to jamie becoming pregnant with her daughter the reality was that never happened Jamie did get pregnant, but it was six months after filming had wrapped on the series. So the show was canceled by the executives at Nickelodeon. For some reason, they felt the show was done and needed to be replaced by something new and more fun. And Jamie actually did have plans to continue her career on the silver screen. But like we said, six months into looking for work, a new job opportunity opened up and it would be the most challenging of all, the role of a mother. She decided to move back to Mississippi and gave up her career in film to raise her kid and be a star to, you know, the household. 
Now it's not all missed opportunities, however, as Jamie is still remembered fondly as a musician, releasing several songs before 2010, and has recently been popping up at several country and rock festivals to lend her voice to the crowd, and many fans will be happy to know that not only there will be a Zoe 101 flick released on Paramount Plus this fall, but it stars the entire original cast, and a trailer is already out for us to enjoy. Perfect. All right, number eight, Jake Paul. Jake Paul looted them all. News headline or Dr. Seuss title, I don't know, that's right. The famous YouTuber Jake Paul was briefly a Disney star in the early 2010s, appearing on a short-lived sitcom called Bizarre Bark. And in 2020, Paul was involved in a looting that took place in Scottsdale, Arizona. A riot broke out in a mall, literally surrounded by police helicopters with lights and sirens. And Jake's reaction had people scrambling for their phones and cameras, but video footage was released by Paul himself showcasing the events of the night. People were smashing windows and taking everything in sight. And while Paul posted a statement on Twitter claiming he had nothing to do with the riots and they were exclusively kind of observers of the event. But the video did show Jake intervening with looters in the mall. And of course, groups were recognizing him almost immediately. And thankfully, the authorities stepped in to make their move on Jake, who told his fans, no cap, that's tear gas, bro. Okay. Thank you. However, that was just the situation Disney needed to kind of finally fire the guy according to Disney and his reckless public behavior was very well known to them at the time. And there had been plans in place to simply address the issue and learn. But the following events in Scottsdale, well, kind of had no choice to cut ties with the performer immediately. He was charged with criminal trespassing and his defense for the Scottsdale event was that he was documenting it as a quote, public service. If I videotape my friend stealing a Star Wars mug from Hot Topic, is that also a public service? I don't know. All right, number seven, Mitchell Musso. Mitch played Hannah Montana's best friend, Oliver Oaken, on the hit Disney yeah. sitcom, Hannah Montana. When the show was coming to an end, he began dominating the Disney scene. He was cast to voice Jeremy and Phineas and Ferb, playing one of the ritual kings and pair of kings, and something called Hatching Pete, which I vaguely remember watching, but this one I'm pretty sure I've kind of repressed. Now, he seems to be on track to follow Demi Lovato as the next big thing to come from Disney, and people think that about Demi Lovato, right? Unfortunately, his career came to a screeching halt in 2011 when he was arrested in Burbank, California. He neglected to slow down after being directed to kind of do so by police and pull over. The report said the moment the window was rolled down, it was like a cloud of something just drop kicked them in the nostrils and he blew a BAL of 0.8, which for those who don't know means he was kind of gone. He was also forced to participate in a adult juice educational program and charged with driving under the influence. Kind of standard, but needless to say, it doesn't really go with Disney's vibe. So he was recast on Pair of Kings. His prank show, it was canceled. And he was basically blacklisted from Disney entirely. He had also been attempting to start a music career, but that also just kind of nose dived into the toilet. Now, if you'd like to find Mitchell these days, just go download one of his old songs. You'll be the first to do in a while, and I'm sure Sure, he'll find you. All right, at number six, we have Orlando Brown. That's So Raven, another series considered to be a part of the golden years, also known as the early 2000s of Disney, starred Raven Simone as the titular character who had the ability to briefly see the future via unprompted visions. Now, I swear every time I explain a plot to an old Disney show, I question who was on what when they were pitched. The show had a stellar supporting cast, including Raven's best friend, Chelsea and Eddie, played by Annalise Vanderpaul and Orlando Brown. Orlando's time as Eddie was received well with audiences, and he quickly became a fan favorite for not only his comedic abilities, but dramatic ability as well. Now, after Raven wrapped up its final season, Orlando's career, it took a bit of a turn. Surprisingly, he was being cast as a small side character or secondary characters with minimal screen time, so he never really got a lead after the show. In 2022, he appeared on Dr. Phil's talk show and opened up about his struggles mentally and financially. He also shocked audiences with his new look, drenched in tattoos and sporting a pair of demon eye contacts. Now, unfortunately, it seems that Orlando has fallen victim to the darker side of Disney, and he was arrested for a misdemeanor as well after an altercation with his brother. All right, number five, Brenda Song, London Tipton. She was the daughter of the man behind the chains of Tipton Hotels in the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Brenda Song accepted the role right as she was about to start college. Little did she know the character would consume her life for the next six years. 
years. She appeared as London on both Zack and Cody and its reboot sequel, The Sweet Life on Deck, for a total of six seasons following the show's cancellation in 2011. Miranda starred in a few smaller roles and films like The Social Network, as well as TV shows in like Scandal, uh, New Girl, and Superstore. Now, Brenda, she's still active in the acting community, just in smaller, just in a smaller capacity, as she's traded in her Disney fame for family fortune, starting a family with her boyfriend and fellow child star, Macaulay Culkin. Now, Richie Rich and London Tipton have a child together, and that's not a show, or not even a reality show. Brenda is slowly making her return to the mainstream as well. However, she has recently starred in a few Netflix and Hulu series, including the comedy series Dollface, where Brenda claims to have rediscovered her passion for acting. And here's hoping that inspires Disney to make another Wendy Wu movie, maybe? If you don't know Wendy Wu, Homecoming Warrior, you, you need to look into that. <laughs> All right, number four, Kel Mitchell. Welcome to Good Burger, home of Good Burger. Can I take your order? The sentence that always blasts into my skull when I talk about Kel Mitchell. Kel was another young buck to be cast on the hit show, All That, with Amanda Bynes and future best friend Kenan Thompson. Much like Amanda, Kel was asked to participate in a spinoff of All That, only this time a straight up sitcom rather than more of a sketch show. And the show, Kenan and Kel, starring Kel and Kenan Thompson, is one of my favorite that Disney Channel produced. And these two had incredible chemistry and so good that Nickelodeon had a movie centered around them, Good Burger, that has actually aged pretty well. And his character never really took off after that, with him only appearing in that sitcom world and in a minimal capacity then. But his loss of fame was kind of self-inflicted as his career on screen slowed down. His family life has been nothing but up. He decided to stay at home and focused on building a relationship with his wife and rapper Asia Lee. And they are currently expecting a second child sometime this year. We're hoping that when the kids are a little older, Kel can get some time off and maybe make a return to the acting world. Now, there was a rumor of a Good Burger 2 being in the works, so let's start that now. Hashtag Good Burger 2, make it a trend. <laughs> All right, number three, Josh Peck. Josh made up the second half of the series Drake and Josh alongside musician and bad boy Drake Bell. Josh got his start on the Amanda Bynes show alongside Amanda Bynes, participating in several classic sketches before eventually moving on to his own sitcom that is still considered to be one of the best Nickelodeon shows ever produced. Josh's time on the show, it was wonderful. He delivered a zany, big hearted kind of brother vibe that went really well with Drake's rock and roll, I need love on the inside. Um, kind of character and following the cancellation of the show, Josh went on to star in several silver screen showings like the underrated comedy Drill Bit Taylor starring Owen Wilson and the reboot of Red Dawn from 2012 alongside Chris Hemsworth. His career dipped in quality following that performance though. Josh was starting to seem like another Nickelodeon kid who was growing up to be rambunctious and wild instead of taking his job seriously. He lended his voice though to several characters over the years, including various roles in the Ice Age films, but has mainly stuck to small TV roles or independent flicks and he did maintain a following. However, as of a few years ago, he started posting TikToks as well. Those received millions of views. And recently Josh has popped up on the cast list of Christopher Nolan's upcoming historical drama Oppenheimer. Perhaps this will mark his return to the acting world if it's in a movie like that. Now, he may be on the road to Oscar territory. All right, number two, Amanda Bynes. Amanda, she got her lucky break on the Nickelodeon sketch series, All That. Essentially, the Nickelodeon version of late night sketch show, Saturday Night Live. It sported a stellar cast, including current SNL cast member, Kenan Thompson, Drake Bell, and Lori Beth Denberg. Eventually, the producer decided to offer Amanda her own series. Her success only grew from there. The Amanda Bynes show became one of Nickelodeon's most watched series, and she was picked up by several studios to star in non-Nickelodeon projects like She's the Man, Easy A, and Amanda took a hiatus, however, in 2013, following a very public breakdown. In 2018, she told fans exactly what caused this breakdown. Now, according to Amanda, she became addicted to the devil's lettuce at a young age. While it wasn't an addiction at first, more roles came more pressure and a kind of way to cope. And this eventually led her to more drastic substances. She also believed that she wasn't pretty enough anymore to be in films. And she took Adderall as a way to help her stay thin. In 2013, Amanda posted a series of bizarre tweets where she seemed to be insulting almost everyone she could think of. She called the former president Barack Obama ugly, clearly referring a character from the Amanda show, but still. She was arrested and placed under psychiatric hold as she was accused of several hit and run incidents. And was 
was officially charged with reckless endangerment and criminal possession of some interesting herbs and spices. Her parents then placed her under a conservatorship until 2022, when she stood in front of a judge, healthier and better than ever, ready to move on with her life. The judge then said, okay, Amanda is free to go. Good luck, Amanda, then. Okay, there's a million kids who grew up with you, and we've got your back. All right, let's end things off with number one, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay is a Disney star who actually never really appeared in a sitcom or TV series. She got her start acting at just the age of three, starring in over 60 TV spots and commercials for brands like Gap, Pizza Hut, and Jell-O. She got her big break when Disney cast her to play two roles in the classic Disney family comedy, The Parent Trap. She played twin sisters, Hallie Parker and Annie James, who randomly met at a summer camp and discover their parents split up when they were babies following a divorce. The twins then hatch a plot to get mom and dad back together and it's delightful, one of my favorites. Her career though only seemed to rise from there, starring in several cult classics like Freaky Friday with Jamie Lee Curtis and Mean Girls as the main character, Katie Heron. Unfortunately, her career took a step in the wrong direction when she was arrested in 2007 for driving under the influence of a controlled substance for which she served 84 minutes in jail. Yep, minutes. Some people spent years in jail. Lindsay, she got a warning there. Until 2022, her career um, kind of came to an abrupt standstill, but she not only seems to be better mentally, um, she's also under contract with the streaming giant Netflix to release a few rom-com flicks over the next couple years. So maybe her and Adam Sandler will make a Netflix multiverse. Now, I don't know how I'd feel about that, but We'll see where it goes. Number 10, Kel Mitchell. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can I take your order? That sentence always blasts into my skull when I talk about Kel Mitchell, and I really hope it's the same for you. Kel was another young buck to be casted on the hit sketch show, All That, with Amanda Bynes and future best friend, Kenan Thompson. Much like Amanda, Kel was asked to participate in a spin-off of All That, only this time he was in a straight up sitcom rather than a sketch show. The show Kenan and Kel, starring Kel and Kenan Thompson, it's one of my favorite shows that was ever produced by the Nickelodeon channel. These two had incredible chemistry. So good that Nick backed a movie centered around their Good Burger sketch that has actually aged pretty well. His career never really took off after that, with him only appearing in the sitcom world and in a minimal capacity at that. But his loss of fame was self-inflicted. As his career on the screen slowed down, his family life had been nothing but going up. He decided to stay at home and focus on building a relationship with his wife and rapper, Asia Lee, and they are currently expecting a second child together sometime Time this year. Here's hoping that when the kids are all a little older that Kel can finally take some time off and make a return to the acting world for good. There was a rumor of a Good Burger 2 being in the works, so I don't know, let's start that now. Everybody, hashtag Good Burger 2, make that trend. Number 9, Miranda Cosgrove. Miranda may have rose to Nickelodeon stardom when she played the titular Carly on the show iCarly, but she got her first big role starring alongside Jack Black in the classic comedy School of Rock. During her time with Nickelodeon, she not only played Carly, but she also played the mischievous little sister, Megan, in the sitcom Drake and Josh. There's a neat little fan theory about that, but I won't get into it right now. Following the end of iCarly, Miranda seemed to disappear from the world of acting entirely, apart from lending her voice to the character Margot in the Despicable Me franchise. The reason being is she decided to go back to school. She used her iCarly cash to fund a degree at the University of Southern California, where she initially took film studies, but eventually shifted her focus to a major in psychology. She put her talents on pause, but following her graduation, and her recent return to sitcom world, iCarly was revived for Paramount Plus last year. She's still not famous per se, but it is cool to see Miranda on screen again after so many years away. Number eight, Drake Bell. Ah, Drake and Josh. A sitcom that gifted us with some incredible one-liners and caused anyone named Megan to have their name screeched in their face in frustration. Megan! Drake Bell and Josh Peck starred as the titular Drake and Josh for four seasons before being cancelled in 2008. Following the cancellation, the three main cast members all went on to have semi-steady work, for a short while at least. Miranda Cosgrove, who we just talked about, played Megan and had some success in voiceovers, but she got her own sitcom and then dropped out of the acting world in 2015. Josh Peck starred in a few movies and TV shows here and there, but he's only recently made a return to the mainstream, appearing in the new Christopher Nolan film Oppenheimer. Drake has probably had the worst go of the crew. When the show was cancelled, his roles were limited to straight to video flicks and voiceover starring, and voiceover roles, starring as Spider Man in the animated Ultimate Spider Man series. The worst performance of all, though, was when Nickelodeon thought that it would be a great idea to make a live action, fairly odd parents movie starring Drake as. 
as Timmy Turner. There is. Needless to say, his status as a celebrity was gone at that point, but the nail was driven into the coffin in 2021 when Drake was sentenced to two years of probation and 200 hours of community service after it was revealed that he had been grooming a young fan for years. So if you see him in an orange jumpsuit on the side of the road or like cleaning graffiti off a wall, now you know why. Number seven, Amanda Bynes. Amanda got her lucky break on the Nickelodeon sketch series All That, which was essentially Nickelodeon's version of the late night sketch show Saturday Night Live. It sported a stellar cast, including current SNL cast member Kenan Thompson, Drake Bell, and Lori Beth Denberg. Eventually, the producer decided to offer Amanda her own series. Her success only grew from there. The Amanda Bynes show became one of Nickelodeon's most watched series, and she was picked up by several studios to star in non-Nickelodeon projects like She's the Man and Easy A. Amanda took a hiatus, however, in 2013 following a very public mental breakdown. In 2018, she told fans exactly what caused that breakdown. According to Amanda, she became addicted to the devil's lettuce at a very young age, and while it wasn't an addiction at first, with more roles came more pressure and a need to find a new way to cope. This eventually led her to more drastic substances. She also believed that she wasn't pretty enough anymore to be in films, even taking Adderall as a way to help keep her skinny. In 2018, in 2013, Amanda posted a series of bizarre tweets where she seemed to be insulting almost everyone that she could think of. Like she called the former president Barack Obama ugly. Like she's clearly referencing a character from The Amanda Show, but still. She was arrested and placed under psychiatric hold as she was accused of several hit and run incidents and was officially charged with reckless endangerment and criminal possession of herbs and spices. Her parents then placed her under a conservatorship until 2022 when she stood in front of a judge, held and better than ever and ready to move on with her life. The judge said, okay, and Amanda is now free to live. So good luck, Amanda. There's a million kids who grew up with you and we've all got your back. Number six, Dan Schneider. Dan was never a star on camera other than a small role in the movie Good Burger, but without this man, we may not have a lot of beloved TV shows. Dan was a producer behind some of the biggest shows Nickelodeon had to offer. Shows like Keenan and Kel, Drake and Josh, iCarly, Zoe 101, all classics that may have never been set to film without Dan at the helm. While Dan was producing well into the late 2010s, his career abruptly ended in 2018 when allegations were brought to light, alleging that Dan's behavior over the years was anything but wholesome. According to several set and cast members who've worked with Dan in the past, Dan has a massive temper that would regularly disrupt shoots, he's caused production delays on his own, ballooned the budgets of all of his shows, and there were several complaints about his verbal insults. Reportedly emailing and texting cast and crew to complain about things during off hours. Like, hey man, I'm trying to watch Too Hot to Handle. Can we just save this till tomorrow? The worst of them all, and what really got him fired, was the way that he was towards his younger cast. I won't go too far into detail because I would probably vomit on camera if I did, but let's just say that Dan is creepy creep who likes them feet. Put it that way. Thankfully, he's been fired and will never make another penny off of that channel ever again. Number five, Devin Werkheiser. You may not know Devin by his name, but his face certainly rings a middle school bell in your skull. Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide first premiered in September 2004. For those who missed out on this gem, it followed the titular Ned as he guided us through the daily struggles of attending middle school. It was an instant hit, and I personally watched every episode that they ever made. I basically grew up with this guy. After three seasons of the show, it was canceled, leaving its cast to fend for themselves and find new work. Most of the younger cast members on the show decided to step away from the acting world, with Lindsay Shaw, who played Moe's, being the only one with steady work, albeit in like low budget films, but still, it's work. And she's been doing that ever since the show ended. Now, Devin could have had a stellar career, but he said in recent years that following the end of the show, he just had no idea what he was supposed to do next. Devin was 15 when the show finished, and between then and the age of 25, he said he never really found his footing as an actor, always being called back for things, but never actually hired. In his mid-20s, the residuals from Ned's finally ran out, forcing him to take his first ever 9 to 5 job. This was the wake up call that he needed though as he was finally motivated to do more. And thanks to many fans who were now adults DMing him and asking him when the next Ned's college or adult guide would be released. Well, Devin has begun doing a series of lectures across the United States in college and university campuses in an attempt to give advice on the wild world of adulthood. He's also begun a podcast with his co-stars Lindsay Shaw and Daniel Curtis Lee who played Moe's and Cookie 
Wiki, where the three break down behind the scenes facts about every episode of the show. So if you want a little bit of Ned's declassified nostalgia, then check that out. Number four, Matthew Underwood. Matthew played the rich boy with the puka necklace, Logan on the hit series Zoe 101. The show followed the titular Zoe as she started her life at a new private boarding school, where wild and wacky situations ensue. The show gifted us some highly quotable lines and memorable moments that have surely stuck in your head since the show's cancellation in 2008. Matthew played a mean jock on the show, but his character had a lovable side that quickly won fans over. When the show ended, his life started going down a dark path. He found himself involved in some legal troubles after being caught in possession of a controlled substance, devil's lettuce, for which he received 12 months probation. He violated that probation when he entered a hookah bar, which he co-owned, in St. Lucille called Cloud Nine. His criminal history was brief, but it was enough to get him blacklisted from the acting world. There is a nice ending to this story, however. After laying low and working on his mental health, Matthew actually ended up rescuing a baby from a crashed car, along with both parents who had allegedly over on warm needle juice. This act not only saved the baby, but a judge ruled that the parents were unfit and the child was given to a family member and they're living happily ever after thanks to Logan. Matt is currently working behind the screen as a director on short films and indie projects, so hey, if you see that Zoe 101 reboot in the future, he's ready to go. Number three, Jamie Lynn Spears. Continuing on the Zoe 101 train for a minute, Jamie starred as the titular Zoe in the hit series, Zoe 101, alongside fellow entry on this list, Matthew Underwood. Her time on the show was well received and made many fans excited about what she may film next. When the show was eventually cancelled in 2008, Jamie was at the center of a massive media rumor. The theory was that Zoe 101 was abruptly cancelled due to Jamie becoming pregnant with her daughter. The reality was that that never happened. Jamie did get pregnant, but it was like six months after filming had wrapped on the series. The show was cancelled by the executives at Nickelodeon. For some reason, they felt that the show was done and just needed to replace it with something new and more colorful. Jamie Amy actually did have plans to continue her career on the silver screen, but like we said, six months into looking for a new work, a new job opportunity opened up, and it would be the most challenging job of all the role of being a mom. She decided to move back to Mississippi and give up a career in film to raise her kid and be a star to her. It's not all missed opportunities, however, as Jamie is still remembered fondly as a musician, releasing several songs before 2010, and she's recently been popping up at several country and rock festivals to lend her voice to the crowd. Many fans will be happy to know that not only will there be a Zoe 101 flick released on Paramount Plus this fall, but it stars the entire original cast, and there's a trailer already out for us to enjoy. Number two, Josh Peck. Josh made up the second half of the series Drake and Josh alongside musician and bad boy Drake Bell. Josh got his start on the Amanda Bynes show alongside Amanda Bynes, participating in several classic sketches before eventually moving into his own sitcom. Still considered to be one of the best shows that Nickelodeon ever produced. Josh's time on the show was wonderful. He delivered a zany, big hearted brother vibe that went really well with Drake's rock and roll, I need love inside attitude. Following the cancellation of the show, Josh went on to star in several silver screen darlings like the underrated comedy Drillbit Taylor alongside Owen Wilson and the reboot of Red Dawn from 2012 alongside Chris Hemsworth. His career dipped in quality following that performance, however. Josh was starting to seem like another one of those Nickelodeon kids who was growing up to be a rambunctious and wild man instead of actually taking his job seriously. He lended his voice to several characters over the years, including various roles in the Ice Age films, but he's mainly stuck to small TV roles or indie flicks. He did maintain a following, however, as a few years ago he started posting TikToks that received millions of views. But recently, Josh has popped up on the cast list for Christopher Nolan's upcoming historical drama Oppenheimer, so perhaps this will mark his return to the acting world, and if it's in a flick like this, well, he might be on the road to Oscar territory. And at number one, Nat Wolf. Nat Wolf and his brother Alex were the stars of the short-lived Nickelodeon series The Naked Brothers Band that premiered in 2007 following the success of the original Nickelodeon movie of the same name. When the show ended, Nat decided to move on from the screen, from the on-screen world, and focus on his career in music with his brother Alex. He did, however, make a handful of appearances in romantic dramedies like Paper Towns and Fault in Our Stars. Unfortunately, he took a role that he probably shouldn't have in 2017 when he played the character 
Light in the Netflix live action adaptation of the anime series Death Note. In case you didn't know, the anime originated in Japan and stars Japanese voice actors. There is not a single actor of Japanese origin in the live action flick and Nat's performance was seen as nothing more than another example of Hollywood whitewashing for streaming services. He received a large amount of backlash from fans of the show and dropped out of the acting scene overnight. It wasn't until this past year that he reappeared on the small screen. Nat has been cast to play the love interest to Joe Exotic, Trevor, in the Peacock series Joe vs. Carol, a show based on the popular Netflix docuseries Tiger King. While that show hasn't really garnered the popularity that it really should, seeing Nat make a return to the scene is awesome. And as a fan of his show back in the day, I am hoping he collaborates with Alex for a horror film. After seeing Alex star in the 2017 horror pick Hereditary, it's like the only thing I can think about when I see these two. Number 10, Brenda Song. London Tipton was the daughter of the man behind the chain of Tipton Hotels in the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Brenda Song accepted the role right as she was about to start college. Little did she know that that character would consume her life for the next six years. She appeared as London on both Zack and Cody and its reboot sequel series Sweet Life on Deck for a total of six seasons. Following the show's cancellation in 2011, Brenda starred in a few smaller roles in films like The Social Network, as well as TV roles in shows like Scandal, New Girl, and Superstore. Brenda is still active in the acting community, just in a smaller capacity, as she's traded in her Disney fame for family fortune, starting a family with her boyfriend and fellow child star, Macaulay Culkin. Dude, Richie Rich and London Tipton have a child together, and that's not a TV show? Brenda is slowly making her return to the mainstream, however, as she's recently starred in a few Netflix and Hulu series, including the comedy series Dollface, where Brenda claims to have rediscovered her passion for acting. Here's hoping it inspires Disney to make another Wendy Wu movie. And if you don't know Wendy Wu Homecoming Warrior, well, that, that's fair. Number 9, Shia LaBeouf. Shia has been a controversial celebrity over the years, becoming famous as one of the hardest people to work with in Hollywood history. Like many bad apples in LA, Shia got his start on the Disney Channel. At the turn of the century, Disney released a little show called The Even Stevens. The series followed the titular Stevens family with a focus on the kids, Ren and Lewis, played by Christy Romano and Shia LaBeouf. The show is considered to be one of Disney's best, spanning three seasons and spawning an Even Stevens movie that is one of the greatest pieces of cinema ever released. These days, Shia has adopted a more mountain man look, always sprouting like a big bushy beard when he can, and he's gone from bright and youthful to just tired and annoyed. And we feel that, Shia. We really feel that. Following the show's end, Shia kept his acting career going strong, appearing in the much-loved classic Holes as main character Stanley Yelnats, but it wasn't until his casting in the live-action Transformers series that he really began to descend into madness. Since 2007, Shia's behavior as both an actor and a person have been getting worse and worse. His fellow actors have reported that Shia takes method acting way too far and just smells terrible on set, not to mention the several public art displays that he gifted the world in the mid-2010s. Oh, and who could forget his passionate, motivational video where he just told us that nothing was impossible and just do it! While he may still be working today, his reputation as a celebrity has certainly shifted from A-list to the nothing you list. Number 8, Ashley Tisdale. Ashley was making a big name for herself in the Disney world after starring as Candy Girl Maddie on the sitcom Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Her character is considered to be one of the main reasons that that show worked in the first place, so it was surprising to see her suddenly vanish from the acting world in the early 2010s, following the end of the High School Musical trilogy as well as her time with the Sweet Life crew. After leaving Disney briefly to film a few raunchy comedies, including the fifth entry in the Scary Movie franchise, she disappeared and fans were confused. Where's Sharpay? Well, it turns out she decided to focus on her personal life and she tied the knot with musician Christopher French in 2014. After building a solid foundation in her relationship, she shifted her focus to a different style of art in the form of cosmetics. Ashley launched the brand Illuminate Cosmetics as well as a wellness blog called French, which led to her personal care brand called Being French. While she may have lost her name in the Disney sense, she's rebuilt a solid career for herself in other other aspects and is actually set to make a small return to the acting world in a new series for CBS called Brutally Honest, loosely based on Ashley's own life. Well, I'm going to be brutally honest with you, I am watching that show for sure. Number 7, Orlando Brown. That's so Raven. Another series considered to be a part of the golden years, aka the early 2000s of Disney, starred Raven Simone as the titular character
character who has the ability to briefly see into the future via unprompted visions. I swear, every time I explain a plot to an old Disney show, I just question like, why did I like this? Who pitched this? The show had a stellar supporting cast, including Raven's best friend Chelsea and Eddie, played by Annalise Vanderpool and Orlando Brown. Orlando's time as Eddie was received well with audiences, and he quickly became a fan favorite for not only his comedic abilities, but his dramatic ability as well. After Raven wrapped up its final season, Orlando's career took a bit of a turn. Surprisingly, he was being casted as small side characters or secondary characters with minimum screen time in film and TV. In 2022, he appeared on Dr. Phil's talk show, opened up about his struggles mentally and financially. He also shocked audiences with his new look. He was drenched in tattoos and sporting a pair of demon eye contacts. Unfortunately, it seems that Orlando has fallen victim to the darker side of Disney as he was arrested for a misdemeanor after an altercation with his brother. Ugh. Number 6. Mitchell Musso Mitch played Hannah Montana's best friend Oliver Oaken on the hit Disney sitcom Hannah Montana. When the show was coming to an end, he began dominating the Disney scene, being casted to voice Jeremy in Phineas and Ferb, playing one of the titular kings in the show Pair of Kings, and he was in something called Hatching Pete, which I vaguely remember watching, but I'm pretty sure it's one of those movies that I have like a repressed memory for. He seemed to be on the same track as Demi Lovato as the next big thing to come from Disney. Uh, people think that about Demi Lovato, right? Unfortunately, his career came to a screeching halt in 2011 when he was arrested in Burbank, California. He neglected to slow down after being directed by police, and the report said that the moment the window was rolled down, it was like a cloud of no-no juice just drop kicked him in the nostrils. He blew a BLA of 0.8, which for those of you who don't know, means that he was absolutely hammied, bud. He was arrested, forced to participate in a no-no juice educational program, and charged with driving under the influence. Needless to say, that doesn't really go with Disney's vibe. He was recasted on Pair of Kings, his prank show was cancelled, and he was basically blacklisted from Disney entirely. He had also been attempting to start a music career, but that just nosedived into a toilet. If you'd like to find Mitchell these days, just download one of his old songs. You'll be the first one to do it in a while, I'm sure he'll find you. Number 5. Jake Paul The headline here sounds like a Dr. Seuss title. Jake Paul looted a mall. That's right, the famous YouTuber Jake Paul was briefly a Disney star in the early 2010s, appearing on a short-lived sitcom called Bizarre Varks. In 2020, Paul was involved in a looting that took place in Scottsdale, Arizona. A riot broke out in a mall, literally surrounded by police helicopters with lights and sirens, and Jake's reaction? Oh man, we gotta get the cameras, let's go! Video footage was released by Paul himself, showcasing the events of the night. People were smashing windows and taking everything in sight. While Paul posted a statement on Twitter claiming that he had nothing to do with the riots, and they were there exclusively as observers, the video did show Jake interviewing looters in the mall, and of course groups were recognizing him almost immediately. Thankfully, the authorities stepped in to make their move on Jake, who told his fans, no cap, that's tear gas, bro. Yeah, how is that English? However, that was just the situation Disney needed to finally fire this guy. According to Disney, Jake's reckless public behavior was very well known to them at the time. There had been plans in place to simply address the issue and to learn from it, but following the events in Scottsdale, they had no choice but to just cut ties with the performer immediately. He was charged with criminal trespassing, and while Jake's videos may still rack up millions of views online, he's certainly no celebrity anymore. His defense for the Scottsdale event was that he was documenting it as a quote, public service. Well, okay, if I videotape my friend stealing a Star Wars mug from a Hot Topic, is that also a public service? Number 4. Jennifer Stone Another Wizards of Waverly Place co-star, Jennifer Stone is just another one of those people to lose their fame overnight, but it wasn't due to anything outlandish. Jennifer played the best friend to Selena Gomez's Alex Russo, Harper Finkel, on Wizards of Waverly Place. Harper was a bubbly and eccentric character, usually wearing some kind of elaborate dress made from something that just shouldn't be a dress. She played the role so well that the writers decided to make her and Alex live together in the later seasons to give Stone as much screen time as possible. Following the cancellation of the show, she was swooped up by another channel that I'm apparently not supposed to say the name of, but it rhymes with Clickalodeon, and was casted as the babysitter slash narrator on the show, Dead Time Stories. Good old fashioned horror shows aimed at kids. Huh? Yeah. Are, are you afraid of the dark, anybody? Huh? Unfortunately, that show seemed to be her last, as following the final season, she's remained fairly aloof from the public eye, appearing in small budget flicks, but she mostly stays at home and takes care of her mental and physical health. Jennifer was diagnosed with diabetes in 2017, and has been participating in public outreach programs ever since. You go, Finkel! Number 3. Ricky Ullman He was Phil! Phil of the future! Keeping it together just as best as we can! Sorry, that show had the catchiest theme song of all time. You may recognize Ricky as the face of the hit show, Phil of the Future. Following the titular Phil and his family struggling to adjust to the year 2000, after their 
your time machine breaks down in the wrong destination. That's right, if you thought the DeLorean from Back to the Future was strange, these guys built their time machine into an RV. If you're gonna build a time machine, why not do it in style? The show was loved, but it was cut short after only two seasons on air, meaning that Ricky was just 19 when he was suddenly out of steady work. In an interview with Insider Magazine, he said that he regrets the way he handled the situation back then. The reality was Ricky didn't know how to navigate the world of Hollywood as he got the role of Phil because he was pressured into attending an audition. He appeared in a few small projects following the show's cancellation, even making an appearance on the hit comedy series Broad City. But nowadays, Ricky just sits in a chair next to his phone waiting for that call to hopefully come. Reboot time, baby. Number 2, Christy Romano. Christy was Disney's go-to girl in the early 2000s. After breaking onto the scene starring as Ren Stevens in the legendary sitcom The Even Stevens. While she may have starred alongside future Transformers star and maniac Shia LaBeouf, it was Christy that stole the show. She played the character effortlessly for three seasons before being tapped to lend her voice to another Disney icon. Christy provided the voice of the animated super spy Kim Possible. Following the cancellation of that series in 2011, Romano actually used her new fortune to attend film school and study what goes on behind the scenes. Romano has remained outside the acting world since that time, apart from a starring role on Broadway as Belle in Beauty and the Beast in 2018. Her most recent venture is that of a YouTube blogger, now chronicling her day-to-day -day life as a mom. She may not be famous anymore, but she will certainly go down as one of the Disney Channel's greatest. And at number one, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay is a Disney star who actually never appeared in a sitcom or a TV series. She got her start acting at just the age of three, starring in over 60 TV TV spots and commercials from brands like Gap, Pizza Hut, and Jell-O, she got her big break when Disney casted her to play two roles in the classic family comedy Parent Trap. She played twin sisters Hallie Parker and Annie James, who randomly meet at a summer camp and discover their parents split them up when they were babies following a divorce. The twins then hatch a plot to get mom and dad back together, and it's really just a delightful movie. Her career only seemed to rise from there, starring in several cult classics like Freaky Friday with Jamie Lee Curtis and Mean Girls as the main character. Katie Heron. Unfortunately, her career took a step in the wrong direction when she was arrested in 2007 for driving under the influence of a controlled substance, for which she served only 84 minutes in jail. Yep, minutes. Some people spend years in jail for less, but Lindsay got a warning. Hmm. Until 2022, her career was at an abrupt standstill, but she not only seems to be better mentally speaking, but she's also under a new contract with the streaming giant Netflix to release a few rom-com flicks over the next couple of years. So maybe her and Adam Sandler will make like a Netflix multi I don't know how I feel about that. Coming at number 10 today, we have the Kardashians. For years, the Kardashian family has often been criticized for being famous for doing nothing. Thanks to Kris Jenner, nobody would probably know their names if she didn't leak a certain tape of her eldest daughter, Kim Kardashian. While her family may now be millionaires and billionaires thanks to their many companies within the clothing and beauty industry, they still try to claim that they work hard to be where they are today. However, if it wasn't for their insane drama and big peaches, we probably wouldn't even know their names, let's face it. Kris Jenner was smart and she used this to her advantage and with her power she was able to make her family the most famous family in Hollywood. Like everyone knows that if you want to go anywhere at this point, you have to get in with the Kardashian family as once you befriend the whole family, a lot of doors open up and it will help you get to where you need to go. Just look at Black China and Tyga. No one really knew who they were and now they're pretty much household names. However, outside all the drama with this family, what are they actually famous for? So Kendall is a model. But what does the rest of the family do other than complain about the reason that people aren't making it into the industry is because they aren't waking up every day to work their hardest. It seems like today they're only in the spotlight for their toxic image that they impose on weight loss and how being skinny is the only thing you can do to be pretty. Number 9, Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate is blowing up online due to his controversial opinions on being a man and making money and it's creating headlines across the web. While he's often endorsed a misogynistic culture, he has also admitted to scamming guys on the internet. When he is not creating harmful content on social media, he is frequently seen flaunting his yachts, Bugattis, and wealth. And by now, you're probably wishing that this guy never even rose to fame. With Andrew preaching about how women belong to men and men can do anything they want to them shows that Andrew has zero respect for a woman. And his recent arrest in Romania shows that this guy is garbage. And he's just as garbage as we all believed him to be. 
Andrew's viewers tend to be misogynistic men like him, as well as naive adolescent boys who just can't get girls to like them. With his content being dangerous to view, these younger individuals have come so heavily influenced by Tate that they have even adopted this misogynistic and racist view that he's expressed on all of his platforms. Examples include how Tate uses racial slurs in his tweets and has degraded women on his podcast for having no innate responsibility or honor. Like, I don't know why the world has a tendency of making such garbage people famous, but out of all the people, why do men love this guy so much? Like, there's nothing impressive. Like, he's even too scared to get into a ring with Logan Paul because he knows he'll lose. While his presence on social media has started to diminish, to diminish, it's clear people like Tate don't deserve fame or money and they're not worth the spotlight at all. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Coming in at number eight, we have Chris Brown. At one point, Chris Brown represented the future of pop and RB music. With his Michael Jackson, like dance moves, cute boyish looks, and songs about chasing girls in school, now he's all grown up, tatted, and sings about wetting the bed and making headlines the trending topic on Twitter, and it seems like every week is just a different topic. So why has Chris Brown become a celebrity that everyone loves, but at the same time, loves to hate? Over the years, Chris has had beef with multiple celebrities, and each time there is beef, Chris always seems to be in the wrong as he always takes things way too far. While he was an extremely talented artist, I can only imagine the amount of pressure one must have when living under a microscope. Everything you do or say judged by millions of people. But even with saying that, even being stressed from your job can't justify your actions. And honestly, it just, baffle, it just baffles me why people even choose to support him after he has a long history of being violent with women. So why are we supporting him? Number seven, James Corden. James Corden is only popular for his role as a late night talk show host. But even though everyone knows who he is, he isn't exactly everyone's favorite cup of tea. And a lot of people have actually expressed their dislike towards him. While James has gone on to become one of the most popular talk show hosts in recent years, his popularity hasn't always come with the audience's full approval. While his work in movies such as Into the Woods, Cats, and Trolls could easily make him a beloved figure in the entertainment industry, he has been deemed as being annoying and has earned the dislike of the audience over the years over various reasons. While the reason so many people dislike James Corden has been fueled by different events, both in front of the camera and behind the scenes, it's clear that he shouldn't be famous and none of us should buy into his nice guy image. And on more than one occasion, he's actually been caught being rude and fake in interviews and in his shows when talking to his guests. James is known to interrupt or talk over people and he has the constant need to sing over his guests in his fan favorite segment, Carpool Karaoke. Also, let's not forget how he's rude to servers at restaurants. To me, it seems like James has never worked a customer service job and that's why he has zero respect for people. Number six, Jake and Logan Paul. It just seems like everything Jake and Logan Paul do lately is highly controversial and it makes you wonder why the brothers even rose to fame in the beginning and how they were even able to stay on top despite all the negative things they seem to do. Sure, both brothers are extremely good looking, but do good looks just give you a free pass in the industry to get away with dumb behavior? Both brothers rose to fame after they started out on Vine by sharing prank videos that amassed millions of views. After the video sharing app shut down in 2016, they would take their talents to YouTube and Instagram and they would continue to gain millions of fans. And since their rise to fame, multiple controversies and legal issues have followed them. Despite their controversial lifestyle, the brothers have somehow managed to grow their fame through acting and boxing, making them more than just internet sensations. The Paul brothers' seemingly endless controversies over the years have been polarizing to watch. With Jake facing multiple lawsuits, essay allegations, and have been accused of terrorizing his neighbors, he even lost his gig on the Disney Channel show, Bizarre Bark. Yet it seems like even with scandals and allegations, the brothers have been able to continue on because their fans still remain unfazed by their actions, which is pretty disturbing. Number five, Addison Rae. 
So something's really been bothering me since the release of TikToker Addison Rae's He's All That Movie. Like, if entering into 2023, we could just not cast TikTok stars in shows and movies, it would be great because it's clear fame doesn't correlate with talent. It seems like TikTokers who become famous often branch out exploring other talents such as those in the music or movie industry. And every time I have to listen to a song or watch the movie, I have to think, who thought this was a good idea? Now mind you, some have actually been able to cross the platform and make it into other industries such as Bella Porsche, but it seems like for some, they think they can just hide behind their smiles to distract us away from their poor acting. Cough, cough, Addison Ray. Addison's acting, and He's All That was notorious at its best, as the acting was pretty much comparable to the kids on the Disney Channel. If the movie actually starred a trained actress, it probably could have lived up to its hit 1999, Desser, She's All That. Since influencers are already in the position of power and money, opportunities are often just handed to them and many don't have to work to achieve their goals, which bothers me the most. Those in the acting industry have paid thousands of dollars to attend classes to make names for themselves. That, and that's why influencers on TikTok shouldn't have the ability to become actors instantly without any preparation just because they're famous figures. Number four, Elon Musk. The overwhelming news flow that comes along with Elon Musk and his company just makes all of our heads hurt. And it's actually, to be honest, Pretty weird to watch a bunch of famous people scream at each other over Twitter constantly. While they are always trying to do some righteous combat online, I honestly just want to take out my phone and look at pictures of my cat while it all unfolds. Now, there are essentially two distinct narratives when it comes to Elon. And they are, in their simplest terms, one, Elon is a hero, and two, Elon is a villain. But if I had a third option, Honestly, it would be who cares and why are we even talking about this guy as he's just a normal guy with an unusual amount of money. To support any of his moves, you practically choose to emphasize certain facts and de-empathize others and you literally accuse everyone that writes about Musk in a big picture way of cherry picking. While his narrative has definitely been divided between genius and villain, it becomes so large that trying to just get back up to speed on all of his drama just makes me not want to come into work and read about it. Like I get it, the dude is filthy rich and he's highly controversial as he tries to make the world a dangerous place while implementing free speech. But do we have to make all rich people famous because Elon is just someone I would like to forget about at this point. Number three, the royal family. While the queen was pretty popular, there have been a series of public relation disasters that have tarnished the rest of the royal family. And while Charles has taken over the throne, it makes us wonder if the UK will soon abolish the monarchy. Now, the institution itself continues to enjoy broad support and with the UK under unprecedented strain from the Scottish separatism, proves that it may be hard for any future monarch to be able to provide the same steady influence as Queen Elizabeth did. While many controversies never touch the queen, it's bound to make things even more difficult for Charles, who has been subjected to intense scrutiny. Especially since people still believe that the royal family had something to do with the passing of Princess Diana. The whole family is just a giant symbol of what's wrong with the world, and it makes me question why do we even still have a monarchy at this point? Like what are they truly doing that the world leaders aren't currently doing? Like let's be real here, Charles is going to have to find someone to help him fill in Elizabeth's shoes, as it's definitely going to take two men to do her job. As we're not just questioning the monarchy at this point, but the country that produced it. Like we're honestly not in the medieval times anymore, and we need to step away from the whole one family rules the world type of thing. Number two, James Charles. There's something about James Charles still being famous after trying to talk to younger boys that just doesn't sit right with me. Or can we also bring up the fact that he hangs out with younger kids that became famous on TikTok? Something about that just gives me the ick. At this point, it only seems like he's famous because he's influenced by fame, power, and a fat bank account. But his actions just prove that he's a bad role model and there's something that's just really sus about him. 
Even while he has become one of the most hated influencers around the controversial situations he's found himself in, seems like fans still believe he wasn't completely in the wrong for any of them. A majority of people just didn't care to follow the drama surrounding the beauty community because they found it just cringy. Like he's clearly a terrible person, there's no denying that, but at this point, He's just famous for being famous and, it, and it's kind of really hard to see why he's still on the top when he's not even talented nor charismatic. Number one, Dr. Phil. Okay, I honestly hate cancel culture, but if there's one person that needs to be canceled, it's Dr. Phil. How this man still has a show is beyond me. Dr. Phil has pretty much become a controversial figure since he became one of the highest paid celebrities in Hollywood. With him having some flamboyant cases of people with problems, he has somehow managed to build an audience who will boo and make fun of his guests rather than call him out on his outrageous behavior. While he claims to give some free treatment, there have been claims of abuse at a ranch type facility treatment that he sends minors to. A young woman claims that she was not even allowed to call home and even bad baby has confirmed that she witnessed some heartbreaking things go down on the ranch and called Dr. Phil out on it. What's even more concerning is that Dr. Phil doesn't even have a license to practice any of this in any state, although he does have the proper education, credentials. He has often stated that he doesn't like one-on-one -on -one therapy, but He'll do it just to humiliate you in front of an audience? There's something about messing with someone's mental health publicly, let alone behind closed doors that bothers me, and it's kind of outrageous that people think it's okay when he does it.